All right. Looks like the webinar is starting. Looks like we got some people rolling in. Uh, good morning, Anna. How are we today from CSG? Good, good morning. Doing well. Still working on my morning cup of coffee. Well, that's <laughs> right. Halfway through it. So uh, ready to rock and roll this morning. I love it. I love it. Well, uh, well, folks, thanks um, for those that are going to be tuning in today. Uh, we'll give it a couple minutes uh, before we get started. Uh, but just wanted to do some quick introductions and the reason why we're doing this training uh, with Anna from CSG. Uh, as, as many of you know, or you might not know, uh, CSG is an integrity partner. Uh, the technology that they offer for quoting and enrollment processes, which um, Anna's going to cover today, uh, is very unique in the industry. Uh, as they're, they're trying to make things as easy as possible, right? Uh, so we, we've seen some really good success in the field from brokers. So today we just wanted to bring an awareness uh, to what this powerful piece of technology can do and the expert behind it, who's Anna, uh, who has um, joined us today to, to show us how this done. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop off the screen and I'm going to let Anna just go do her thing, but please show her some love because she's great and she's taking some time out of her day to show us how to do this. So Anna, the floor is all yours. Oh, thank you. And thank you everybody for spending the next hour here with us. I always tell agents that I know that your time is super valuable. So the hour that you spend with me is an hour that you're not writing an application, but I'm going to show you here in today's training, the easiest way to take an application so you can be more efficient with it and save you a lot of time down the road. Um, we recently started getting some testimonies from agents who are using this e-app quite frequently every single day. And what I see in almost every single testimony is the word easy, 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 easy. It truly is easy to use. And what you'll see as I'm going through this webinar is no matter if you're doing an application for a Lumico, which I'm going to be doing a Lumico e-app or a Medico e-app, um, it is going to be the same look and feel and the same process for every single carrier. So we know the headache of having to go to all these different carrier websites to learn every single carrier's e-app, the, the different nuances. This eliminates all of that and that headache for you. And I know so many of you are turning to CSG to run your med sub quotes. So you're already in CSG running your quotes. All you have to do is hit that apply now button and it takes you right into the e-application on our system. So we're not redirecting you to the carrier's website where you then have to re-enter all that information in. We're taking you right into the application. So that's what I'm gonna be demoing here for you today. Um, I do have the Tidewater CSG brand quoting tool pulled up on my screen. This is probably what you are all very familiar with, being able to quote your Medicare supplements, your Medicare Advantage, your dental, your hospital and demi and final expense. Um, you also have your e-applications here where as you start an e-app, all of those applications, whether they're incomplete or submitted, they all store within this e-app. So it's also an easy way to see all the applications that, that you have started, to see all the applications that you have submitted. So you can easily track your business too um, in one spot. Um, the other way or another way that agents access CSG is through the Medicare Center. So if you are utilizing uh, the Medicare Center, uh, which I highly recommend you're using it for your CRM and your call recording and your Medicare Advantage um, quoting and enrollment, you can also access CSG on this platform as well. So I'm just going to sign in the Medicare Center really quickly here for you. In the upper right hand corner where you see your name, if you click on CSG app, this takes you right into the CSG coding platform as well. So again, two different ways that you can access it, whether you're going directly into Tidewater's brand and quoting tool or accessing CSG on Medicare Center, either of those options. Now, I'm, I am going to, to pull up what I call my testing environment. I like to be able to start an application, start to finish for you, and actually submit it. So I'm going to go ahead and run a quote in my uh, testing environment here, but just keep in mind it's going to be the same look and feel and the same process as if you are using Tidewater or Medicare Center branded uh, CSG. 
So those of you that are new to CSG, it's really, really easy to run your quotes on here. All you have to do is start by typing in that zip code. Once you enter in that zip code, it will populate the county, the city, and the state in the upper right-hand corner. You can always adjust your age, gender, tobacco status, how you want to sort by which plan you want to quote, and then whether or not you want to include household discounts or not. I always encourage agents, especially if you're taking an application on our system, to always move that effect effective date forward. That way you can see all of the rates that are effective for your effective date that you're doing the application. Um, so when you run your quote, um, you'll be able to see the, the different carriers that, that Tidewater rep represents and that you're able to write. Um, just a quick overview of CSG. Uh, we always show you household discounts, policy fees, um, what type of rating class it is, how many years they've been in the market, the effective date of the rates being shown. Um, over here on the left hand side, you can also apply discounts. So if you want to apply that 7%, 10%, 12%, whichever company has that discount, on the left hand side, you can always hit apply discounts. Um, and then the rates that are being shown are now the rates that include the household discounts. When you are looking at these different companies, there may be companies that have multiple uh, plans listed just because they have multiple rating classes, or maybe they have different household discounts where one household discount is a spouse uh, discount, the other is a roommate discount. So just keep in mind uh, when you're looking at the, the rating classes, which one you are selecting. Um, so today I'm going to be demoing the Ellipse Life Lumico e-application. Again, keep in mind, although I'm demoing this one for Ellipse, it's going to be the same look and feel for any carrier that we have on our e-application platform. You know we have that carrier on our e-application platform if you see this Apply Now button. So Apply Now just means that we have integrated them on our e-app doesn't mean that you're necessarily contracted with them. It's just that we have that available on EAP if you are contracted. Now, the first time you hit apply now, it is going to ask you to validate that you have a contract with that company. So some companies will ask for your national producer number. Other companies will ask for your writing number. So it does kind of vary which how they uh, verify you. But essentially, we ping that carrier in real time to validate your appointment. We then save your agent ID, your, your writing number, your NPN in our system. That way you don't have to enter it in every single time. So you'll notice when I hit the apply now, it just took me right into the application. That's because I have, I've done applications on here for Ellipse several different times. So it remembers me and just takes me right in. But in the back end system, which what you're not seeing is we are pinging their, their database to validate you. So um, that's kind of the, the process that's going on behind the scenes. If you ever need to update that saved agent ID or that same um, NPN, you can always go into the settings in the upper right hand corner and always adjust your, your NPN or your writing numbers. You should not have to do that, but in case you ever do, that's where that is located. Um, so you hear CSG or in any one of our emails online, you'll hear me say this a lot in today's training, universal. What do we mean when we say universal? And that is it's going to be the same process, the same look and feel for every carrier, every product we have on here. So you'll notice when I sign in, it always starts by showing me my agent ID um, and my name. Then I'll always go through the underwriting type and the plan eligibility first. Over here on the right hand side, we have our overview section where it automatically carries over that quote and the quote parameters. You'll have all of your initial documents. So if you need a copy of the outline of coverage, the disclosures, the guide, you can always download those or you can always send them to an email address if you need to. And then once you select your underwriting type, it will then populate the sections over here on the right hand side that you will have to go through and complete. Now those are grayed out right now because we have to select an underwriting type. So this is where it makes the, the, the e app pretty easy is based upon that underwriting type, we're only going to show you sections that you have to complete. 
So if you're doing an open enrollment or a guarantee issue, we're not going to show you the, the health questions. Um, but if you are doing a fully underwritten app, you'll have an area to answer health questions to enter in drugs. Um, so that's where we're, on, we're only showing you things that you have to fill out on the application, making that an easier process for you and also quicker. Our applications will underwrite in real time. They will also notify you of any errors. So you'll always see your notifications here. So in this case, it just tells me that I don't have an active appointment in this particular state, but I can complete the app application, but I may have to reach out to, to the carrier to get contracted or to add North North Carolina as my particular license. Um, so just different things like that that may come up in your notifications. One example I like to use is if you are going through a fully underwritten application and you answer certain health questions and you answer yes, and that is an automatic decline, the system is going to notify you of that automatic decline. If you go through and you enter in the wrong underwriting type, so let's say you're a little bit confused between um, the guarantee issue and the open enrollment. If you accidentally select the wrong one, based upon your plan eligibility, your Medicare Part A and Part B effective dates, our system will recognize that and tell you that, that you selected the wrong underwriting type. So we have a lot of safeguards built in place just to make sure that your application is always submitted in good working order. Um, the only difference from, from application to application for the different carriers is going to be how those carriers were their health questions, or they may have carrier-specific fields. Um, some may ask for your, are you a Mr., a Mrs., a Ms.? So those kind of nuances from, from, from carriers, those would be the only difference. Some may require your Medicare um, number or your Social Security number. Other carriers may not require it, but it will be a field on there. So those are going to be the only differences between the different carrier applications. But this look in this field, this process that I'm going to go through here today with you is going to be the same. Okay. So as you're going through this application, keep in mind everything is automatically saving for you as you go on and you hit continue and go on to the next section. So you can always easily come back into an application, pick up where you left off. A lot of cases that they are going to be waiting to um, answer health questions with you or wait to enter in uh, billing information or wait till they're available to do the signature. So everything saves for you. You can always come back into it. I'm going to demo how that works here today as well. So let's go through this application. We'll go through start to finish. I'll show you some of those uh, differences in the applications and different notifications that, that you may see um, just so you can get familiar with it. So first and foremost, I'm going to do an open enrollment. This is somebody who is new to um, Medicare, recently turned or turning 65, their Medicare Part A and Part B effective dates. I will go ahead and enter into the system here. So once I select the underwriting type, the plan eligibility, verifying the date of birth, I can go on and I can hit continue. Now, once I hit continue over on the right hand side, it is going to populate the different sections that I will now have to go through. You can go through each section in order um, and then just go ahead and hop on to the next section. Otherwise, you will be able to um, see the sections that, that you've, you've completed and then hop uh, over to the next section just by clicking on the sections icon. I did notice that my video paused, so I am sorry about that, um, but uh, hopefully you can all still see my screen. The first question is your uh, plan type. So because I quoted a G, it's automatically going to pull over my G here and then my quote over here on the right hand side. Now, as I go through this application, if I change anything that would affect the pre adjust for me. So if I move this over to an N, it would update the quote on the right hand side to reflect the, um, to the N. So anything with a red asterisk is going to be a required field. So we can go through this and fill it out. So I'm just going to use um, a test name here. We're going to use Jane Smith. 
um, her resident address. City, state, and zip code carries over from the quote. Is the mailing address different? So if they had a PO box, that's where you would enter yes and then be able to enter in that PO box. And then you can type in the home phone number and then the mobile phone number. Now with the mobile phone number, there is an option um, for LIPS to do a text signature. Um, so that's where we, we can pull in that mobile phone number to do a text signature. Um, email address, same thing. I'm actually going to put in one of my Gmail emails. Gmail emails, kind of funny thing to say there. Um, I'm going to type that, that in just so I can show you what the screens look like in case you are doing an, an email signature option. And then age, date of birth, and then gender. I can go ahead and then hit continue on to the next section. Again, as you hit continue, it is then going to um, save everything there for you. I'm gonna see if I can restart my camera here just so I'm not paused. Um, a lot of people ask me with the, the household discounts, especially when you're quoting household discounts within the, the, the quoting tool, what the definition is. So we will label for you what the household uh, discount definition is. So if you answer yes to the household discount premium um, and then how you answer these these particular questions, the rate on the right hand side would adjust to the household or the non-household discount depending on how you are answering those particular questions. Uh, so in this case it's just asking for the uh, spouse's information and then uh, the address as well. So I believe I did, just trying to pull in the same zip code I ran the quote in. I believe that is correct. I'm just checking the little cheat sheet there on North Carolina and then their date of birth, I can type that in as well. Relationship spouse and then hit continue. Now, as you complete a section, it will have a green check mark letting you that know that section is good to go. A yellow air icon over there on the right hand side just means that there's still missing information that we have to go through and we have to complete. Uh, so it, it stayed with, with my household discount here. Now, let me just show you if I were to go back to that household discount premium. And let's say I answer no to the household discount question. So I initially quoted with the household discount, but after I read the, the definition of what the household discount is, um, they're not eligible for a household discount. So then if I hit continue, my rate over here on the right hand side is going to reflect the non household discount rate or it should there um, in most cases, it may not in this testing environment, but it, it would update based upon how you are running that particular quote. So then from there, I'm gonna go ahead and enter in the social security number and then the Medicare number. I may have to pull up a test one to make sure that I have a eligible number there. And then my Medicare Part A and Part B effective dates automatically carry over. And I'm just gonna answer the questions accordingly. Yes, no, are you eligible for Medicare due to disability? No, and then this is just giving authorization for electronic documents. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit continue there. And then the next section, the previous or existing coverage information. Um, this is where I can answer these particular questions. If you answer yes, and then it will then prompt you to enter in more information. So if this is a case where I had another meds up in force. I select yes it will then prompt the additional fields that I would have to go through and enter. So we're only showing you fields that you would have to go through and complete. So just for demo purposes, I'm just gonna select no to these particular questions and then hit the continue button. 
Now this, this is one example I like to kind of pause here before I go through and complete anything else in the application, just to show you what it's like to uh, maybe start filling out an application and then having to come back in later and fill out more information. So if you ever go into your view application, so you can go into that from your dashboard page where you have your e-applications, um, this is where all of your e-applications store. So you can see I do have incomplete apps, I have submitted apps, you can see how it's going to vary, um, especially with the carrier. So I have some mutual Omaha, Medico, United Healthcare, Ellipse, Ascendo, all different types of carriers applications started or submitted that I can always view. So let's say you started working with uh, Jane, you are waiting to, for her to be available to provide you her billing information and also be available for signature, but you went through and answered some of the basic questions that you already knew in the application. This is where you can always get back out of it and then come back into it later. You see that status of incomplete. So when I'm ready to get back into the application, all I have to do is hit this edit button. I do get asked a lot about if we have any type of testing environments for agents. Uh, we don't. So if you want to get comfortable utilizing the e-application platform, what you can do is you can um, start an application, go through the, the questions and get comfortable with the screens, uh, but just don't actually go through and submit the application. So you can always hit that trash icon to then delete that test app. So you'll notice it took me right back into my application at the method of payment section where I left off. So again, it just kind of takes you right back into there. Now I'm gonna go into my, back into my select underwriting situation. And again, I just wanna show you some of the different screens that you would see if you selected a different uh, uh, underwriting type. So let's say in this, this case, I was doing a fully underwritten app and I would hit continue. Over on the sections, it's then going to populate the different health questions for me. So again, based upon the underwriting type that you select, it will have those sections that would populate for you. Um, you will be able to also see here, whoops, Well, you guys can all see my screen. Mike or Logan, you can still see my screen, correct? We sure can. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. My ring central is like uh, doing something weird on me. So I just want to make sure that you can still uh, see it. It's telling me to restart it. So um, you can see here that one, I got additional information here. So I can see my health information, my medication information. Now I have those additional fields. And then you'll also notice that in my notifications, I now have a notification that says, based upon the information that you have entered, you are currently eligible for open enrollment. So this is where we have that smart technology built into the system for you to recognize any errors. So if I do go into that health information section, all of, all of the health questions that are shown within this section are going to be the exact same health questions that, that the carrier has on their application. So that's again, one of the differences from um, carrier to carrier is going to be how they word their particular health questions. So even if I answer yes to some of these health questions, Again, as I hit continue, it would also give me a notification that um, I'm being denied because I answered yes to one of the health questions. Same with medications that, that you enter. So it says the applicant may not be issued coverage because you answered yes to at least one health question. So again, all of those, those notifications are gonna come in for you. If you are taking prescription drugs, you can enter yes, and then enter in all of the drug information and then add, add that RX drug coverage. So that's, again, I wanna be, make sure that you are aware of the differences with the different underwriting types, as well as those notifications. I always like to, to demo that for agents. So I'm gonna go back into my select underwriting situation here. Again, it's really easy to hop in and skip to different sections. I'm gonna go and turn this back to an open enrollment. 
And then so I don't have to go through every single section, I'm just gonna quickly hop back to my method of payment. So now those, those errors, the health information, the Medicare information, medication information section, those will all go away now that I'm back into my open enrollment. Back to having all of my green check marks there. So let's go through the method of payment. Uh, we do have, for most carriers, we have another signature type called a wet signature. A wet signature is if you wanted to fill everything out onto a PDF electronically, print off that PDF and have the client sign that application with a pen um, and then you send it into the carrier. So that's what we consider a wet signature. If you want to submit everything electronically and not print anything out, not send anything in, you will answer no to that question. Method of payment. This is one field that may vary from carrier to carrier on what they allow for billing. So if I want a bank draft, you can see I can do a bank draft for annual, semi-annually, quarterly, or monthly. If I wanted to be billed for it, you would see I only have three options, annual, semi, or quarterly. That's where it would uh, just differ uh, on what your options are. Initial uh, premium payment timing, I'm gonna do it as requested on the effective date. And then my following payments can always be on the first day of the month. And then my banking information, I can use a checkings or a savings account for that. The routing number, you can either type in the bank name or type in the routing number, either option works. It will populate your options based upon what you have typed in. So in this case, I just typed in First National Bank. I can find which First National Bank based upon that rounding number and then select it. Account number, I can enter that in. Is this a business account? No, and then just the first name on the account. Am I the authorized signer? I'm gonna hit yes, and then I'm gonna hit continue to go on to the next section. Now, if it is a husband and wife and they share the same bank account um, and on the, the bank card, it says Jane and Bob, you can just go ahead and put Jane in there. That is fine. Um, you don't need to put both, uh, both of their names in there. Uh, indicate the type of business. We're going to say new business. Have I sold any other health insurance policies? So if I answer yes, those additional questions would populate there for me. Uh, deliver policy electronic, um, mailing preference to the applicant. Did I review the application for uh, correctness in any omissions? Yes. Did the applicant review the application? Yes. And then here's where I will enter in the producer phone number and then the address of um, the agent. So just type in another address here and then city and state myself a North Carolina address. And then if I have to upload any type of supporting documents, um, this is where I can do that. So if you have to um, provide the guarantee issue documentation or any other documentation, you can upload documents here if need be. And then we do have an option to, again, depending on if the carrier allows this or not, whether you want to split commissions. Um, in this case, I'm gonna put no, and then I'm gonna hit verify application. So what we're looking for once we hit verify application is having green check marks alongside every single section. If I have that little air icon, um, it won't allow me to lock and e-sign. So here I'm just going to go through all the sections, make sure I have everything complete here. If I found any errors, all I have to do is go back and hit that edit section to go back into that section. And everything looks good. So at the bottom, I can hit lock and e-sign. That print for signature, this would be if I wanted to do that wet signature where everything went to a PDF and the client physically signed the application and you sent it in. Uh, so again, if you want to do everything electronically, go ahead and hit that lock and e-sign. And then it will pull up all of the consent to do the electronic signature. So we'll accept that consent and then hit continue. 
Printing would be printing the disclosures. Print and wet sign would be printing the disclosures and doing the wet signature. Uh, so now that we're at our signature, our method of signature, we have a couple of different options. Now this is going to vary from carrier to carrier depending on what they allow. Um, some carriers will allow um, in-person applicant provide identification information. Um, some carriers will just have email and in-person. Some may not have a text. Some may have all three. This is where it will vary based upon carrier. So if, if I was in the same physical location, um, I have all three options here. Um, I can do applicant provides identification information. If they were face to face with me and I wanted to use this, this route, um, their signature is their mother's maiden name and the last four of their social security number. So what I would do is if I was face to face using this option, I would open up each document to then review that document. Once I open up that document, it opens up in a new tab here up at the top, and then it turns the bar green. So you do have to open up each document to, re to review it and then to save a copy of it. Um, I'm gonna show you here what it looks like when we throw everything onto the carrier's paper application in this PDF. So you can see we went through all of this electronically and filled it out. And then method of payment authorization. So once every single form has been uh, filled out here, I can click I have received, read, and kept a copy of the above documents. I did notice over here on the right hand side my premium uh, did change. Um, this, this would be to reflect that uh, household discount uh, not being applied. And then my signature will be my mother's maiden name. And then I will enter in the last four digits of the social security number. Um, this is one that kind of throws agents off a little bit. Uh, they don't type in the last four digits. They, they think it's filled out because they, uh, they, they see these numbers here. But this is just showing you what the last four digits of that social security number would look like if you're looking at a social security number. So you do have to type in those last four digits acknowledging the city, the state, and the zip code that they're signing in, and then apply e-signature, and then it will carry over your producer name and then your agent ID, and then you can hit apply e-signature, and then you can hit sign application. Uh, so once you hit sign application, it will, it will go ahead and then submit the application directly to the carrier. So that's one option. If you are face-to-face -face with them, you have the applicant providing identification information, now, if you're not in the same physical lo location and you answer no, you have email or you have text. So I'm gonna show you what the email signature looks like. Um, if I was doing this email, it automatically carries over the email from the applicant information section. If you need to change this email, that's where you would go in and hit edit application and then go back to that section um, and change the email. If you're doing a text signature, it automatically carries over the, the phone number on the application. So if you need to change this phone number to a, a cell phone number or a different phone number, you can, you can change this here. The only one that you can't change is the email. You have to go back into edit section to change the email address. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this avenue and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit that sign application. So what it's going to do now, is it's gonna say that the application is now pending. Um, it will also give you an opportunity to view all of the documents as well. So you'll see this nice uh, screen here that says this application is now pending. The applicant signature gives you that option to capture those documents. So if I go back into my view applications, I will still see that application as being incomplete your client does have two hours to go and sign the application now. So if it's past that two hour window, you would have to resend the signature over to them. Um, so we do have that option just to quickly resend the, the, uh, the signature. Maybe they said they're available, they got a little sidetracked and they weren't able to, to sign it. Their verification code wouldn't work. Um, it, it would time out on them. So you can always, um, hit this recent. 
Um, if they are going through the app application and they notice there was an error in the application, you can go and edit the application. It would void what they what you sent over to them so they wouldn't be able to sign it if you hit edit. So I'm going to show you here the screens. I'm just going to pause my screen really quickly here and then pull up my email just so I can show you what that looks like. Switch over to Okay. Now share my screen here with you again. Okay. So this is the email that they will receive. It will have that insurance company's name on here, Medicare Supplement e-application verification. It will come from a do not reply at CSG email. You are also CC'd on this email. So you'll notice here, this is my agent um, email address. So I am CC'd on that email. And then this is the email that they receive. Within this email, it also labels for them that this code will expire in two hours. So if it's past that two hour window, that is where they would have, you would have to click that resend. So I'm gonna go ahead, copy this code and then hit verify application. I will then enter in that code and then the applicant state of birth. Now, if the applicant enters in their date of birth, they enter in their verification code, it's within that two hour window and it does not allow them to verify and it tells them that their verification does, did not validate, um, this is where you may have their date of birth wrong. So the date of birth that they enter does have to match the date of birth on the application. Um, that's, that's kind of a part of the, the security component of it. Um, so then they will then agree to the consent of doing the electronic signature. And then once they hit agree to that, it will then take them in to review the documents here. So these are the exact same screens that they would have saw if they were in person with you. So your client will then open up and review all the forms. So they will have to click on each document and open them up. It will open up in a new tab for them. So the disclosures, the guide, the application. Now these are all of the same screens that if you were using the text signature option, it would be all of the uh, same screens. The only difference is the verification code and the link is sent to them via a text message instead of sent via an email. So again, they would just open up their uh, text, that text they received, they would click on the link, enter in their verification code from the, the text and get right into the application um, here. They will then acknowledge the city and the state that they are signing in. For some reason, Six eight two two. Okay, spell Charlotte wrong here. There we go. And then apply e signature and then hit sign application. So there's really three steps for your client. There is receiving the email with the link in the verification code. They'll click on that link in the email, type in their verification code and their date of birth. Once they verify, they will then agree to do the electronic signature. So they're giving their consent to that electronic signature. And then they have to open up all of the forms, review the forms, click on those, those, those buttons, um, and then they'll be able to sign the application. So make sure that they go through all three of those screens and they do not stop. Um, it says, thank you for submitting a Medicare supplement application with the LIPS. Um, they will then be able to open up the, the documents to see the final ap application if they wanted that copy of that. So if you go back into your account and then you refresh your page here, it will show that the application has been submitted. Um, so that's when you know that it has been sent over to the carrier, that status will say submitted. 
Um, you can always view a copy of that completed PDF by clicking on view PDF. That's again, another way of you receiving that copy. We send all the application data over to the carrier in real time. Um, so we do ask for a 24 hour window before you can see that particular application on the carrier's portal. Um, we do recommend always checking the final status with the, the, the carrier. So some cases we're only gonna show that status of being submitted. So to see if it has been issued, if it ended up getting declined, you would have to check the carrier's website uh, to see that final status. Uh, but that is how easy it is to go through and submit an app application on there. Again, the only difference from, from different carriers on here is going to be how those carriers were their health questions, their required fields. They may have different signature options, different payment options, but those are all gonna match what you can typically do on their website. So if I were just to pull up another company here, so let's say Medicos application and I were to hit edit on this application, you'll notice the screens are the exact same that you just saw on the ellipse. So again, carries over the quote. In this case, I did go through health questions and answer yes, so it says that I was declined coverage here. But again, same exact, exact screens, this being a Medico application um, here for you. All right, Mike, have you seen any questions come in from any of our agents? Yeah, so we've had a couple of questions come in. Um, we had one answered uh, from David Smith about just gaining access to the CSG app. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, David, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be giving you a call. Uh, just make sure you're taking advantage of everything here. Uh, we had a question from a Stephen G. Um, he says, if you are in the same location, does the applicant receive the required documents for their files as well? Um, that's where on the uh, screen, it does ask you um, or provide you the opportunity to open up those documents. So what you would have to do is you would open up those particular documents, you would save them to your computer, and then you would then send those over to them if they wanted those particular forms. Now there is an option too when you're filling out the application, if you want to be sent via email your, your documents. So it does kind of depend on how you answer those, those questions too. If you say you want them mailed or you wanna receive your stuff electronically. So it does depend on how you're answering those, those particular questions. But if you're face to face with them, you have the option to save those documents as you're doing the signature with them. So if you had to send them over a copy, you could create an email and send those over. Fantastic. All right, uh, we have a, another question here um, from a Michael. Uh, he says, can you store documents in the document locker from previously written business or you can only save documents from e-apps you did on CSG? Oh, that's a great question. Great question. Um, I, yeah, great question. So I love our document locker. Our document locker, you can store anything in there. Um, our document locker was originally created for you to store your completed scopes. So there is an option to, to take an electronic scope within CSG. And if you do that, that electronic scope automatically saves into your document locker. But you'll notice when you open up your document locker that you have an option to create folders. Um, so you can create different folders for your clients. You can create a folder with applications, with scopes, with quotes. Um, you can create subfolders within your document locker. So if you want a folder for each of your clients and then within that client folder, you want a folder with their scopes, their, their applications, their quotes, you can do that. There's an upload op option on there. So you can upload anything into your document locker, but it does have to be uploaded as a PDF. Um, so you can't upload uh, like, like a JPEG or a PNG file, uh, but if you save that, maybe you do have a picture of something, as long as you save that picture as a PDF and upload it, you, you can save it into the document locker. So we do not restrict you um, from those documents at all. Awesome. 
Great question. Uh, Michael says, that's awesome. Uh, thinking about migrating my client files from another CRM. Good deal. Uh, thank you, for Michael, for that question. Uh, and, and folks, one of the main questions we get here at Tidewater about this technology and this eApp technology is what's the cost? Um, so to all of our partners, uh, we cover the cost 100%. You'll get all of this uh, at no cost. So, uh, you know, if you're, if you're listening in today and, and this is some technology that you'd really like to gain access to, uh, please feel free to give us a call at 888-622-9122. Uh, we'd love to talk to you a little bit more in detail about uh, how you can gain access to this. But uh, are there any other questions? We'll give it just maybe another second here uh, just to see if anybody has any questions. Uh, but if not, we can, uh, we can go ahead and wrap up and uh, just want to give a huge thank you to Anna for jumping on today and and showing showing us the the power of this technology and and really how it can help you be you know more efficient, uh, help you write more business with uh, a lot of these carriers that are now on uh, this platform. So Anna, um, thank you so much for everything you do uh, in in providing this training uh, to our partners. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. And thank you so much for having me. I think the biggest compliment that we can all get after these webinars is actually seeing agents get in there and use the uh, platform. So if you like what you saw today, I do encourage you again, that is the biggest compliment that I can receive is now see all, all of you submitting your applications on the platform. Fantastic. Uh, and is the recording available? Uh, yes, Michael, uh, we will. Uh, this has been recorded um, and we will uh, we will be sending out the, the training here soon. Just make sure you head over to um, you can go to our website. Make sure you subscribe to our email or even head over to our YouTube channel at Tidewater Management Group. And uh, once we once we have the video ready, uh, the recording will be available as well. Great question. Um, awesome. So, uh, well, Thanks, Anna. Appreciate it. I think uh, I think those were all the questions, and um, we'll go ahead and hop off. And uh, folks, take advantage of it. It's, it's a uh, free, no cost web, uh, not website, uh, free, no cost quoting tool that you can take advantage of. So, this was fun. Thanks, Logan, for organizing it, and thanks, Anna, for uh, presenting it. Yes, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. All right, folks. Take care.